Yes, welcome back. This is F Rap Critic. I'm your boy Malik16 from Plates and Crates. And no, actually, Colombians did run with my crew, but that's a story for another day. This is episode 12.5, and uh, this is category two, where we go over the rap performance on the classic album that we're reviewing. And today's classic album just happens to be the 1996 album from De La Soul, Stakes is High. Now, this is a continuation. If you have not watched video one, where we cover category one, you can go do that. You can also like and subscribe while you're at it. This episode, again, the whole coverage of this album is dedicated to the memory of our brother, my Harlem bro, Jordan Clare. We keeping your spirit alive, bro. And um, may you sleep in peace, my friend. All right, jumping off into the first dimension. The first dimension that gets covered in category two is always personality and charisma, where we ask the question, how much personality and charisma was exuded by the rappers on this album? Mentioned in category one, video one, that De La Soul has always represented this kind of everyday rapper presence since the 90s. When they debuted in 1989, they you know, got tagged with this label of being the hip hop hippies. Um, that had a lot to do with their whole Daisy Age thing that they were promoting. They were the cool kids before cool kids were a thing, before the cool kids were a rap group. And it was cool being an outsider who said, forget the status quo, I'm going to do things my own way. So now the status quo had become gangsterism, and they were against that, but they had turned into every man more than ever, down to the, the clothes that were being worn. But on wax, you know, the way these these messages are conveyed and the way personality is shown here, I mentioned that Paz takes more of the aggressive role and, and you know, really taunts and, and jabs at these other rappers who represent the opposite of what they are. But it seems also that Paz still wants some of that cool. As much as they both, you know, discuss the beginnings of their careers, when, when it comes to material things or, or women, Paz talks with more action. And True Goy tends to talk more passively about these things. And it also sounds like True Goy has, it also sounds like True Goy has more comfortably settled into this position as the everyman. Paz talks about having the money and maybe just not doing the silly things with it that, you know, some of his contemporaries do. Paz talks about betting women and wanting to lust after women and uh, you know that that becomes evident throughout. But where True Goy speaks more from, he even uses passive language. You know, he, he speaks more from a you know, if money comes, don't confuse me with one of those players or champagne poppers. I'm not a millionaire. Maybe one day it'll happen. And if you know those kind of things, uh, I don't have the Rolex yet maybe one day. And so that really shows itself throughout the album as the album goes on. You start seeing this clear distinction between where the two rappers' heads are at. Something that could sit on a scale from one to five heartbeats. That takes us to dimension two, which is suspension of disbelief versus the overall believability. Now, this album is not asking you to suspend your disbelief in any way because there's no real points where they're assuming characters. You get this, this theory that Paz becomes this uh, other alias or alter ego called Wonder Why, which is a play off his other <laughs> alias, Plug One. And yeah, he says that, but there's no real significant marker on any of the songs where he's calling himself Wonder Why that tells you, oh, he's rapping in this way. The closest you get to suspension of disbelief is on the track, the short track, Baby, 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 Ooh, Baby, where it's satirical in nature. And, you know, even in the beginning, they're joking about how overt the sample is and how a sample of a popular song is just being repurposed for something else. And with that, Paz raps in a whole different way, lyrically and, you know, the cadence. To, to drive that point home. It's like an oversimplified uh, joke, inside joke on 
how watered down rap had become at that point. Uh, other than that, these guys are, you know, stressing the, the importance of authenticity, which might be why they mentioned Long Island so much more than any other album ever. And, you know, a lot, a lot of reflecting on their careers, um, where they come from, from the beginnings of their careers up to this point. And, and that's repeated throughout the album. So they're giving you them, you know, they're, they're talking about things that pertain to their lives. When they're talking about ups and downs and stressors and just trying to celebrate the good moments in between, I, I think this is more autobiographical than anything else. So it's all about how much do you believe they are so on this album? especially when we get into parts where they're talking more aggressively. Do you believe they're capable of doing some of the things that they're challenging their, their contemporaries to? Um, do you believe when, you know, there's a line, and we'll, we'll talk more about this in a second, but there's a line where, there's two lines actually. There's a line where, you know, they insinuate that if, you know, somebody is flexing, then Maceo, who is the DJ of the group, and usually the, the more, you know, lax or, or just not as against things, member. So they're like, he'll handle that and cut that quick. And then Trugoy also makes a, a weird line about, you know, Maceo will smack hoes. And I'm like, I don't know if we should be bragging about these things, guys. Um, but the aggressive stance in general, are you believing it, you know? Um, Hearing De La rap about getting getting booty, you know, is that, that's not new. You know, they've been doing that since Buddy, but just a straightforward song about I'm getting her number, I'm taking her home and making her climax. Like, is that new? Is that hard to digest for a long time De La fan or for somebody who just came in at this point in De La's career, only hearing them as elder statesmen? Something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. Evolution, change is good, y'all, right? Dimension three, delivery and use of voice. It almost sucks that Maceo doesn't make one of his rap cameos on this album because it would have been a nice breakup uh, between the two voices uh, of Paz and, and True Boy. Historically, they, they complement each other very well. It works. Uh, Paz takes a higher tone while Trugoy stays in the lower range and, and a more mellow kind of uh, tone in general too. Paz also does this thing where he pushes and really puts emphasis on enunciation of words that he wants you to listen to. We talked about this before with some punchline rappers or rappers who are not that great with punchlines who feel like they have to really announce <laughs> the, the lines that they want you to get. Paz does that with words within choice sentences. He selectively stretches words out so you can get it. Like when he goes, a higher sense of consequence, compliments. Um, or, you know, when he really wants to, you know, he's like, well, some suckable. <laughs> but I think he does it most on the antagonistic lines where he's really trying to stress the point that he's challenging these fake, you know, these opposite representative rappers, or these fakers, these gangsters, these, these commercialized Jiggy era representatives, or these posers. So those are some distinctions that, that happens. Chugoy also tends to use a, a, a more sing-songy cadence. On this album, I would say the projection level is the highest and the hardest that, that we've ever heard from De La at, at that point in their careers. They came out pushing their vocals more than they ever had, especially from the intro and Super MCs, you're getting that, oh, this is a, a new, you know, crisper De La. They, they are spitting. It's not just calm rap. They were coming with, with something to say, you know, even though Paz is taking a higher tone and True Boy is staying lower, they're still pushing. Uh, and project it more. And that's that's throughout. And then if the track is more aggressive in building, they're matching it with that. If it's more bouncy, then they're bouncing. If it's calm, then it's calm. Doggy dog and, and It's So Easy allows True Boy to stay in his comfortable range. But again, the intro, Down Syndrome, Stakes is High, they, 
they're going a little bit more with, with the push. So something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats that takes us to dimension four, the flow. Now, as far as flow, they, they seem to do best when they go back and forth within verses with each other. That's their bread and butter, mostly because it cancels out their compulsions to do those things that kind of take away from them as individual rappers. They flow pretty straightforward. Um, the, the, the structure is, is a basic rap structure. There's parts where there's more syllables on the pickup end, on the back end of the sentences, but not, not too heavily loaded. They've always rapped in a way where they're on the same pace. And De La's pace is very friendly to the karaoke bouncing ball. You can rap along to De La songs with that kind of measure, knowing that that's about the groove that you're gonna stay in. There's always room for variations because De La Soul is known to be experimental and to push the limits of their own uh, artistic and creative boundaries with each album. You could take something like the intro track where both rappers, both Paz and Truway come in so strong and they're bouncing off each other perfectly with, with just dope chemistry and they are spitting these multi-syllabalistic compound rhymes. But even that sounds like a freestyle or a stream of consciousness rap because they're doing this word association and the word association is, it's just like, oh, I'm just connecting words and the flow sounds good, so let's keep up the flow. It's almost like they purposely intended to throw listeners off. And there's a part in True Goy's verse where he messes up either on purpose or not on purpose and just keeps going. What may happen with a sing-songy cadence that, that True Goy tends to use is that his words might land in unorthodox places because he might pick up a different melody after the second bar or after the fourth bar to, you know, take it somewhere else. Or Chugwe has a habit of rhyming two words next to each other on this ending couplet. And then with Paz, as I mentioned, you know, him in him enunciating certain words means that the landing bar gets sacrificed sometimes. Him stretching sacrifices a second where it's not the most perfect landing, but it, he does still catch it at some point where it's not off. It's just, you gotta pick your poison, right? Yeah, he made a choice. <laughs> he made a choice. I think Paz does the opposite where he might front load syllables he does put a lot of syllables in the beginning of his sentence. The instamatic focal point that's coming and then calms down. There you go. Yeah, something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. Now, dimension five, wordplay and bar intent. This is De La Soul we're talking about. There's gonna be heavy bar intent. There's thought put behind the message that they want to get across in verses. Is it always focused is the question on this album. Wordplay comes in the form of abstract language juxtaposition. Um, when I was young, I mentioned in video one for the category one review that I had spent the summer of this year bumping it was written by Nas. Coming to this epiphany that, hey, I'm reading these lyrics and I still don't know what he's talking about because Nas is using abstract language and a lot of non-linear talk. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna go with this De La movement because they represent more grounded uh, lyricism and more things I can relate to. But as a grown man reading <laughs> these lyrics, I, I realized that they were both guilty of the same thing, which some of you feel is the beauty of artistry and, and music and hip hop and expression. That's, that's nice and all, but as a listener, I wanna know what you're talking about. I'm sure the majority of people want that. And I noticed that True Boy more so than Paz gets mired in abstract language juxtaposition where he is just sometimes rapping in either non sequiturs or words put together that are so cryptic, like using alternate words for common things to the point that you get lost in the sentence. And I'm like, why 
you know, De La Soul has always prided themselves on, on being against the norm. So yes, finding a, a different way to say what's going on. Like, you know, there's casual examples of this, like the choice to say rhyme sayers instead of rappers or dime getters instead of gold diggers, um, you know, lots of that, right? Cool, that's easily digestible and easy to understand. A lot of the popular rap acts in the mid 90s were guilty of, you know, coming up with their own terms for things and you just have to be a fan enough to get with it and understand what they're saying when they're saying it. But there's this keeping your brand going and, and you know, your stamp, and there's also losing your audience. So Paz is the straight man of the group. Uh, but what, what happens with Paz is that he spends so much time taking shots. And, and you know, De La is, they've been notoriously mixed up in the accusations of being the most infamous for throwing rocks and hiding their hands. And this goes back to 1994, you know, with the song Break of Dawn, where, you know, Africa, Baby Bam, Baby Bam from Jungle Brothers says that he took a line on there as a diss. And it's really hard not to see how that could have been a thinly veiled diss at the Jungle Brothers. And, um, you know, this is the same album where they had the song Ego Tripping, where the video for that song closely resembled Tupac's I Get Around, complete with a Tupac-ish figure, right? And then on this album, there are lines, you know, True Boy says, I got some questions about your life if you're so ready to die. Paz has a cute punchline where he says, you know, before you can finish, I talk all over your rap like Pete Rock or Sean Puffy Combs. Then on the intro to the album, he says, stick to your naughty by natures and your canes. And it's like, if it wasn't a diss, then what was the point of saying it that way? Because that created all kinds of friction with Tretch. Um, you know, apparently there was a physical altercation or a confrontation about it. Tretch being close with Tupac, you know, these things just fueled the beef. Um, then even lines, you know, like I mentioned on the song, Better Listen, even when they're talking to women, he says something, you know, she says a line to him, I bet your ass is darker than a mob deep track. There's a lot of those kind of moments. <laughs> and it's like, if you're not trying to stir the pot, then why incorporate those kind of lines when I think the only reason it became a big deal is because De La was not known for those kind of things. There's rappers who came in, you know, and that was their MO. If you were a punchline rapper in the late 80s going into the 90s, like a Lord Finesse or a Big Daddy Kane, or even one of the newer shock-based rappers like a Big L or Chino XL who came in saying things that they knew were gonna piss people off and ruffle feathers and, and make people's jaws drop, then it's different. You kind of leave a little less scathe than if that's not your lane and you come in doing it all of a sudden it's like, okay, someone's gonna call you out sooner or later. So that's what, you know, I saw coming from the way Paz approached wordplay more than True Goy, where, you know, I'm telling you, True Goy relied more on the abstract language juxtaposition. Paz was going for these punchlines, and that takes us to the next dimension. So something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats, how much wordplay and bar intent, and, and how did that get executed on this album? All right. Dimension six, punchlines. Okay, there are punchlines here, but again, De La Soul not being known for being punchline rappers, the punchlines tend to be hit or miss here. There's some real um, interesting, you know, correlations that are made on punchlines. Uh, you know, something like, you know, Paz says a line like, like when your man calls and you're cheating on him or some, 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 he's describing a punchline where it's like, it make your heart stop like when your man calls while you're cheating. And then they have some some good lines, but these are not rim shot punch lines. <laughs> you know, they're not or rewind factor punch lines. Now poetic wisdom is what you're gonna get more of. And there's a definite, there's definite spaces on here. When True Goy is not being wrapped up trying his best to be abstract and go out of his way to say things in these ways that will lose the listener. He's really good at giving you everyday man or every man conventional wisdom. 
and it's clear on songs like It's So Easy, Dog Eat Dog, um, even on the breaks, his choice to turn the breaks into a story about how they entered the business was, was great as opposed to Paz, you know, taking it elsewhere. And then, you know, some of the stuff that Dave says, I think he gets the most poetic on Sunshine. So there's, there's plenty of moments and they do well off of each other. Yeah, punchline wise, it exists, but poetic wisdom is where you're finding more of the gold on this album. As older men in the game, as vets in the game, they just have more weighty and, and, and hearty things to say about what they've seen and what they've been through. If De La would have stuck to more lines like, I guess a dominate nothing but a rock with a name, or you know, a meteor has more rights than my people, then they, they just would have been more, more and more levity on this album. Uh, and I'll put some examples of the poetic wisdom that's sprinkled out and the quotability, because you know, Stakes is high verse uh, got hip hop quotable in the source the year that this came out. But I still feel like when it comes to punchlines, Common, that's his bag. And he comes in and upstages everyone, every guest, every, you know, rapper on this album with his feature. Um, not not this clear standout like oh you murdered him, but it's it's clear that that's what he does, and everyone has their lane. And I think Trugoy knows this, so he takes a very calm route on his verse on the business. But Paz still seems like he's going for the gusto. He's like oh I'm I'm going. I'm like, the moments of lamenting is where the real magic happens on this album. So something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats that takes us to Dimension Seven Concepts. Um, not a lot of direct concepts on this album. It, it hits to some conceptual territory, but it's, it's pretty straightforward in what's being talked about. And that's what makes this kind of a deviation from De La Soul surprisingly, because they are um, really well known for their conceptual songs like Millie Pulled the Pistol on Santa, um, Ring, 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 just Potholes in My Lawn even as a battle rap song or as a self-identification rap song that was just put in a different way. I mentioned Baby, 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 Ooh Baby being a satire. Um, yeah, not not a lot, uh, if any, concepts. If you find any concepts, please put that down in the comments. Let me know if I overlooked something that was conceptual in nature. Um, but something to consider on the scale from one to five heartbeats that takes us to dimensions eight and nine. We talk about the content on the album. Dimension eight being the externalized content or the external content, stuff that's dealing with things outside of the, the group as men, as rappers, uh, out of their own personal spaces and thinking about things society-wise, the state of things industry-wise or social ills, things like that environmentally. And then Dimension 9 is going to be the internal content, uh, the internalized content, or the internal monologue, the thoughts, the feelings, the inner dialogue of the group members. Um, what's being talked about mostly on this album is the state of Black culture, the state of Black people, the state of hip-hop culture. Now, hip-hop culture is a microcosm of Black culture. And if the dominant representation of hip hop and blackness, hip hop and blackness is this gangsterism and this commercial materialism, then what does that say about where we're at? So I'm gonna fight fire with fire. That is uh, the content on most songs. Some songs are more hip hop based than others. Some they're, you know, reflecting on life. And again, they shine most when they're taking small breaks from that. On Better Listen and on Pony Ride, Paz deviates slightly to talk about his role as a father, having a daughter, the woes that come with that. You know how that is significant in relation to this verse about him picking up a woman and letting her know, hey, I'm not all about the booty, even though the whole verse is about getting booty. And then the other song where he's talking about the woes of no longer being with the mother of that daughter and time away from the daughter and representation and messages and how he wants to guide and be present in her life. Um, I thought that was really interesting 
and uh, that's that's about the only move away from that dominant content that you get on this album. Four More is a song about getting women. Uh, there's still this toughness there. There's this stretch to prove that De La, even though they're not gangsters or players, that I like getting booty and I like, I can fight and, and Paz goes out his way to reference women. And, and unfortunately women get, you use this fodder. They get thrown under the bus on a lot of this album and relegated as to just props. A lot. They use the B word more than they've ever used on any Daylight project. And I feel like that's a part of that kind of puffing up and, and keeping up with the toughness since they are gonna be the, the force of the underground voice. And so I'm like, man, I don't know if I need a job to say this many B words and, and, and be calling women, you know, these names to get the point across and talk about what you're gonna do. You know, that line about, you know, some suckable ass from a girl. And it's like, that had to be emphasized, huh? Just to be clear, just to create clarity. So a lot of that happens on, on this album. Uh, even on the song Four More, where, you know, he's talking about you know, getting women, and at the end, he's about taking some dude's girlfriend from him, and then he calls her a hoe at the end of the verse. It's like, well, Paz, why, why'd you, why'd she have to be all that? Uh, Trugo is a lot more subtle, you know, he's just like, hey, you know, he's, he's keeping more of that Daisy age. I just want, I just want to spend time with the girl. Paz is bragging about how much booty he's gotten over the years, how much booty he can get. It's really interesting stuff. Yeah, the break sounds like it's gonna be about something. Paz is trying to throw out these random scenarios in his verses, but neither verse really stays on any footing long enough to feel like, oh, this song is about going through trials and tribulations. So when the break down, when the bridge comes and he's using, and, and, it, and they're doing an interpolation of Curtis Blows, that's the breaks. The scenarios he brings up are so much more serious than what any of the verses are talking about. It's like, oh, your partner gave you HIV. It's like, whoa, was this a party song a minute ago? So it's like, <laughs> it's it's interesting. Uh, I mentioned before that a lot of the hooks sound like they are old school Crush Groove style, um, Wild Style style, Cold Crush. <laughs> Funky 4 plus 1 style. So yeah, that's that's about the extent of the content on it. Something to consider on a scale from 1 to 5 heartbeats in both 8 and 9, which takes us to the final dimension, 10, storytelling. There are story elements. There's no full story on here where the, where the rappers take turns and weave an intricate plot together. No, better listen. True Great tells his story about picking up a woman and Paz tells his story about picking up a woman. Two separate scenarios. Yeah, for more, same thing. Telling two separate stories about getting with women. And, and that's about it when it comes to stories. Something to consider on a scale from one to five heartbeats. And that concludes our category two review of Stakes is High by De La Soul, a 1996 classic. If you have not already, please take this time to like and subscribe to the channel. We are still building this global hip hop community and you are a part of that. That's it. Until next time, F a rap critic. Talk about it while I live it. Earth to math.